But let me talk a little bit about new developments, especially when it comes to technology regarding phytoplankton. As you remember, it is invisible. How did we learn 200 years ago, 150 years ago, that phytoplankton even exists? Well, they have a funny quality, and that is that they are a little bit cannibalistic. They like to eat themselves, and one of the reasons why they are pooling at the same location to eat each other, as well as for other reasons. And there are different types of phytoplankton. There are greener types of phytoplankton, and there are browner types of phytoplankton. And in large concentration, not only do they change the color in laboratory settings, but also they can change the color of entire oceans. So 150 years ago, a Swiss scientist came up with an early technology that looks something like this. You put it on the top of the water, and basically seeing what is the color of the water, you categorize the water color. It might look like a simple technology, but 150 years ago, this was revolutionary. The gentleman is called Forel, and he was a Swiss scientist, in case you are interested in learning more. The crazy thing is that 60 years after this technology, we sent the first human to space. For me, it is mind-blowing that we went from this to the first human, Yuri Gagarin, to space only in 60 years. So when the first astronauts went to space, they looked back on Earth, and they saw that Earth is blue, which wasn't too shocking because two-thirds of Earth is basically covered in water, so it was kind of expected. But when they took a closer look, they realized that Earth's waters are not always blue. There are these weird formations on top of the waters. This is an image of Northeast USA, that's Boston, Cape Cod, Nova Scotia, and obviously Austin is down there, down to the south. And you can see these weird formations on top of the water. They kind of look like Van Gogh painting, but obviously they are not. They are a painting of nature. And this is obviously phytoplankton formations. Some of these can be bigger than the entire United States. And when you see it from space, they are clearly huge, like Boston is a tiny dot over here. And just this formation is almost as big as Massachusetts, if not bigger. So we realized that we can see this invisible creature from space, which is kind of crazy. And so last year, NASA put into orbit a satellite specifically dedicated to phytoplankton. This satellite is called the PACE satellite, where the P, what do you think it stands for? Drum roll, it stands for plankton or phytoplankton. 